In the last video, we created a Prisma data model that we used to then generate our CRUD building blocks using the Nexus, Nexus Prisma plugin. <clears throat> and that was essentially the first two steps of the Prisma Nexus workflow. The next, the last step in the Prisma Nexus workflow is to use GraphQL Nexus to basically define um, our schema and resolvers in one component. Um, so that's what we're going to do in this video. So let's head back to our code editor, VS Code. Um, and just take a quick look. This is the Prisma Nexus file that we created. Just take a quick look. This is our Prisma data model that we, that we created last video. And um, after we ran Prisma deploy, it actually populated this generator generated folder with a whole bunch of different content. Um, I think if we actually go in there and look, we can probably see some um, some of our references. Yeah, employee and employer ID. Um, there's a bunch of stuff here that's really encapsulated from our perspective. I wouldn't recommend diving too much into that at this point. Um, let's go ahead and go back to the index.ts file. And this is a meet of where this video is going to take place. Um, so first, let's kind of give ourselves some real estate here. Um, and we're going to basically define the two types. But if you remember with GraphQL Nexus, um, your schema and resolver are in the same component. So we'll do const employee um, set that equal to um, a function called Prisma object type. Um, and this is going to take a object as a uh, parameter and let's go ahead and give us some spacing. Um, and what's really great about GraphQL Nexus is there's a great type safety. So if you um, hit control space, you can see the different parameters that you can actually use here. Um, so I'll define a name of uppercase employee um, and then I'll do comma. I'll give it a um, description, which is actually optional, um, but I like to do this because it really helps the developer experience. Um, employee of a company, um, employer, and uh, I'll do a comma after that, and then I'll hit Control Enter again, and we're gonna we're gonna do this function called definition, um, and you can use an arrow function here if you want. I'm just gonna do a classical function. Um, and, and it's going to have a parameter of, of t, which is defined in the TypeScript uh, definition file. Um, but with t, you're going to do t and then dot. And for this thing, we're going to do Prisma fields, which is essentially the fields from our uh, data model, our Prisma data model. And it's going to take in a array as um, a parameter. And um, we're going to do uh, <coughs> quotes and then it gives us a nice little autocomplete and these are all the fields that we defined um, in our employee type in the Prisma data model and we're just going to do a star which includes all the fields uh, and then I'm going to do a comma and I'm going to add one thing here um, open up uh, curly brackets let's give us some spacing and any like subqueries that we do um, it's best practice to um, basically override it to where it has no arguments. So I'm going to say employer, which is our subquery, and that's going to take args of a blank array, which is just no args. Um, so at this point, the employee object or the employee component is ready to go from a Nexus perspective, which is this is pretty bare bones and simple, but um, which is good enough for this for this component for now. So now I'm going to create a employer component, and it's going to be mostly the same. Um, so I'll do name. Uh, sorry, employer, and I'm going to do a description. Um, Let's see, uh, also known as a company that has employees. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do a uh, definition. And I'm going to do a type T. 
or a parameter t, open that up, and I'm going to do the t.prisma fields, just like I did before, and that's going to take a star as a parameter, which includes all fields. Um, and for the subquery here with employees, um, I'm just going to, I'll just um, recreate this to do no args, so arg of blank array. And that should be good to go. So now I'm going to do the query immutation components, which are really simple. I'm not going to do anything different than what is auto generated. So we do const query equals prisma object type. Uh, I'm just going to take in an object as a parameter. Um, it's got auto complete just like before. This can be name query. And um, this is going to have a definition. Uh, in this case, I'm going to do an arrow function just because it's, it's just one line. So t.prisma fields. And it's going to take in an array of string. And I'm just going to do star here. Uh, I'm not going to change anything from this. Uh, and then we're going to do the same thing for mutation. So I'm just going to copy and paste this guy. And I'm just going to change this to mutation. So at this thing, at this point, our base nexus config is, is defined. Um, we do have to go down to the schema portion under the make prisma schema uh, function, and we're going to have to make sure that we have everything in this types array. So query and mutation are in there from before. It has the user and post from the example, so just to change this to employer. And as you can see, nice auto complete an employee and save that. And now in our integrated terminal, we're ready to do yarn run start. We're obviously if you're using npm, NP, uh, npm run start as well. So um, after you run this, that should generate our GraphQL server. Um, and I already have one in use, let me just fix that. Okay, so now it's ready at this location. So localhost 4000, so go ahead and open this guy up. And this is going to generate the GraphQL playground. So let's just do a little bit of searching around, um, just to make sure that everything is configured appropriately. So on the right here, click the schema. And as you can see here, this looks like our schema has been generated, um, which is really, really nice. Um, we've got our employee query and our um, all of our CRUD uh, functionality automatically defined. That way we don't have to manually go in and do it ourselves. So this is really, really helpful. It saves a lot of time. Um, just, just, for, uh, just to show you, um, let's just go ahead and run one query. Let's just look at all of employees. Um, let's look at the ID, name, email, and just see what happens. Um, okay, so obviously we haven't defined any employees yet. We haven't created any. Um, so this employee is blank. We can kind of know that this is essentially working given our schemas here and this at least returned uh, an empty array rather than null. So I'm going to um, stop uh, at currently for this video and I'm going to pick up in the next video and we're going to dive a little bit deeper into this uh, query language um, just to get a sense of essentially um, what's going on. See you in the next video.